Hi friends, welcome to my another video. Today in this video, I will discuss about the model questions for AB this exam. This exam is very important for those who want to make the career in Emirates like in Dubai, Abu Dhabi, Sarja because this exam is very difficult to crack it as in ADDC exam there is a multiple choice question as well as the design question for the electrical engineers. In ADDC exam you have to pass in multiple choice questions as well as in the design questions. When you pass in both of the question pattern then only you will receive the certificate from the ADDC. Otherwise you will not receive if you pass in the multiple choice question section and you fail in the design section. You have to pass in both of them to have this type of certificate from the ADDC. In this video I am covering the multiple choice questions mod model questions and in my upcoming video I will take one design question as per ADDC regulation and we will try to make one design. So let's start this video. First question is category 1 circuit operating at low voltage option A is low voltage option B is extra low voltage option C is medium voltage and option D is high voltage. As per ADDC regulation there is three types of circuits category 1, category 2 and category 3. Category 1 is for low voltage system. Category 2 is for communications like telephone system wires, CCTV system wires that are coming into category 2 circuits. And category 3 circuits is coming like fire alarm wire and central battery system wire. So as per the question category 1 circuit operating at low voltage will be the right answer. Now let us move to next question. Question number 2 is double insulated equipment is which class equipment? As per ADDC regulation equipments are divided into 3 class. Class 1, class 2 and class 3 equipment. Class 1 equipment are those equipment which require earthing. Earthing in order to protect from the earth leakage fault current. Class 2 equipment is those equipment which have double insulator insulation and not required any earthing. And class 3 are those equipment which are working on separated extra low voltage system. As there is a very low voltage, so this voltage will not be harmful for the human. So it is also not required earthing. But in class 2 and class 3, what is the difference? This class 2 equipment is working on high voltage, meaning low voltage, 230 volt and 400 volt. But Earthing is not required as it is double insulated meaning even there is a earth leakage fault there is two insulation so you will not get any shock due to earth leakage so there is not requirement of any earthing but in class 3 equipment the class 3 equipment are working on separated extra low voltage system the voltage magnitude is very low might be 24 volt or 12 volt then from this volt you will not get any electricity shock. So this equipment also do not require the thing but due to its operating voltage is very low. So here the question is double insulated equipments are which class of equipment. As I told you the class 2 equipment. Let us move to the next question. Question number 3. Low voltage ranges. We always know that that there are different voltage level. Some are calling ELV extra low voltage system. Some are calling LV system. Some are calling medium voltage system some are calling high voltage system. So the question is which range to which range is the low voltage system low voltage. Then suppose there is a three phase system. So this is line one line two line three and neutral. When the voltage between any line to other line is 1000 volt or less than 1000 volt or the voltage between line to neutral is 600 or less than 600 volt then that system is called low voltage system. So here the question is low voltage system ranges. So the option B will be correct as the AC voltage below 1000 volt between the phases between the phases and below 600 between the phase and earth or neutral you can say earth or neutral same 600. So option B will be the correct option. Now let us move to the other question. Question number 4 is above which range above which rating of LB panel in Kamar two earth pits are required. As per the ADDC regulation suppose you have one LB panel 
and the breaker rating is 400 ampere then you need earthing system for that panel but question is at which value of the incomer you require two earth pits the answer is 500 or above 500 LV panel incomer rating we require two separate earth pit so the answer is B that is 500 ampere or above or above but got the question and answer now let us move to another another question question number five maximum prospective fault current at LV substation allowed is as we know that the prospective short circuit fault current is depend on your transformer rating if you want to know how to calculate the prospective fault current and what is prospective fault current then watch my video link will be in the description but let's back to our main question that is maximum prospective fault current for LV substation allowed is how much prospective short circuit fault current allowed at the LV substation level is the answer as per ADVC regulation is 46 kilo ampere for one second let us move to the next question question number six the minimum distance maintained between the lighting protection earth pit and the earthing protection earth pit is option A is 6 meter option B is 7 meter option C is 8 meter and option D is 10 meter the question is asking that suppose you have a building and you have the lighting protection system so you have pit for the lighting protection system and you have panel in this building LV panel and that LV panel will also have their earthing protection earth pit suppose there is a panel for this building LV panel and this panel need earthing pits so the question asking is what is the minimum distance required between the lighting protection pit and earthing protection pit the right answer as per ADDC regulation is 7 meter here I want to highlight one more point it's not related to this question but just informing you as in my previous question I told you above 500 ampere of rating for LV panel two earth pits are required okay for same panel two earth pits are required the distance between these two earth pits should be maintained 6 meter or above but these two are earthing protection pits but here the question asking the distance minimum distance between the lighting protection pit and earthing protection pit so the right answer is 7 meter if the question is between the two earthing protection then the right answer will be 6 meter hope you understood this concept now let us move to other question that the lighting circuit normally be fed from 6 ampere MCB, 10 ampere MCB, 16 ampere MCB or all of the above as per the ADDC regulation the lighting circuit can be fed from 6 ampere MCCB 10 ampere MCCB and 16 ampere MCCB but if I will talk about DIVA regulation then only 10 ampere and 16 ampere MCBs are allowed but here we are talking about the ADDC regulation so lighting circuit can be fed from 6 ampere 10 ampere and 16 ampere MCCB based on the load if the load is less then you can go for 6 ampere if the load is medium then go for 200 uh, sorry uh, 10 ampere MCCB if the load is around 200 watts in the lighting circuit then go for the maximum one that is 16 ampere MCB so the right answer is all of them because as per ADDC regulation we can use 6 mm 10 uh, sorry 6 ampere 10 ampere and 16 ampere all for lighting circuit for power circuit we can go for 20 25 and 32 ampere MCCB based on the load now let us move to eight question the final distribution board breaker and main incoming cable design are designed as per option A is total connected load option B is diversified load option C is maximum demand load and option D is none of the above let me elaborate this question to better understand the answer here the question is asking suppose you are designing a final distribution board then the designing will be based on which load the total connected load on the final distribution board or the diversified load connected to this final distribution board or the maximum demand load connected to this final distribution board or none of the above when you are designing final distribution board take care of this term final distribution board then as per ADDC regulation you have to design as per the total connected load total connected load but if you are designing SMDB or main distribution board then you have to go for the diversified load but here the question is asking for the final distribution board breaker and main cable what designing as per what total connected diversified load or maximum demand load so the correct answer is total connected load but if here the question will be SMDB 
final distribution board breaker and main uh, breaker and main cable will be designed as per then we have to choose the diversified mode hope you understood i am giving you some more information so, so you can relate it and you can easily remember this concept okay now let us move to the other question sub main distribution board limited to dash way option a is 8 way option b is 12 way option c is 18 way option d is 24 way first of all let me elaborate what are these way suppose we have one smdb there is incomer there is bus bar and there is outgoing breakers okay these breakers how many outgoing breakers can be fed from one smdb is the is called the number of ways if any smdb is feeding 12 loads 12 different load and it have 12 outgoing breaker then this smdb will be called 12 way breaker 12 way smdb question here is that how many maximum outgoing we can take from one smdb the answer correct answer is 18 way as per ATTC regulation meaning we can take 18 different load from one smdb there is a limitation we cannot go more than 18 we can go 18 or less than 18 okay the reason is very simple suppose something happened to this panel and we need to do maintenance for this panel and we have to shut down the breaker then if there is a 50 loads are feeding from this smdb then all 50 load will suffer due to the maintenance in the smdb so adbc limited the number of loads number of outgoing from the smdb so even if there is a maintenance some of the load will be active as it is fed from the another smdb this is the concept this is the idea behind maintaining by limiting the number of ways for the uh, SMDBs. Now let us move to other question. Question number 10. The final distribution board limited to dash way for three phase and single phase. The question is same as we seen in the previous question. Here the before the question was for SMDB and this time the question is for final distribution board. Here the question asking how many outgoing breakers are allowed for single phase and three phase as per the ADDC regulation. 42 single phase circuit is allowed from one single phase final distribution board and 14 three phase circuit is allowed from three phase final distribution board. So answer A will be correct 14 way for three phase and 42 ways for single phase final distribution board. Now let us move to other question question number 11 in final distribution board how many single phase circuit can be protected by one RCD. So as per ADDC regulation nine mcbs can be protected by one rcd so here the option c will be correct the maximum nine uh, mcbs or nine single phase circuits are allowed to control by one rcd now let us move to the other question question number 12 neon indicator voltmeter ammeter must be provided for the distribution board rated at dash ampere and above the question is as we know that for the final for the lv panel we require indicator R for R phase, Y phase, B phase, voltmeter, ammeter, and sometime multifunction meter. Then that time we don't require ammeter and voltmeter. The question is at which incomer rating of the LV panel these things are mandatory? Like in maybe you seen for the final distribution board these things are not there because the rating of the final distribution board is very low. Maybe 63 ampere and maximum till 100 ampere I have seen. So the question is at which value of the incomer of the LV panel these things this monitoring and indicating parameters are mandatory for the panels. So the answer is 400 ampere. If the breaker rating of the incomer is 400 and above then we required neon indicator, voltmeter, ammeter, power factor meter. This is mandatory when the ampere rating of the incomer is more than 400 ampere. Hope you got this one. Now let us move to the another question. Question number 13. Main distribution board of rating dash ampere and above must be located in the electrical intake room. The question is at which incomer rating of the main distribution board here mark this word main distribution board we are talking about main distribution board at which incomer rating the main distribution board must be kept in electrical intake room or electrical room. The correct answer is 200 ampere if the incomer rating of the main distribution board is 200 ampere and above then this main distribution board has to keep in electrical room we cannot keep in corridor or anywhere else we have to build one electrical room and there that main distribution board has to keep but if here 
there is a SMDB just it's not related to this question but for the information I'm telling you suppose if this is not main distribution board it is a final distribution board with same 200 ampere rating then that sub main distribution board which having a rating of 200 or less than 200 it is not mandatory to keep in the electrical room you can keep in the corridor accessible place only that you have to care okay but the same breaker rating and the panel change from SMDB to MDB then we have to build one electrical room to keep this MDB hope you understood the difference if the SMDB is of 200 ampere rating then we can keep in any accessible accessible place but if the same panel is a MDB of 200 ampere rating and above then we have to build the electrical room to install this my uh, main distribution board now let us move to the other question that question number 14 all single phase motor above dash HP and three phase motor above dash HP shall be provided with current limiting starting equipment what is the question as we know that all induction motor taking high inverse current at the time of starting so if the motor is say 0 0.5 HP then we don't require any starting mechanism like a star delta starter or VFD or soft starter or DOL starter to start this motor because the rating is very low question is at which rating for single phase motor and at which rating of three phase motor this starting mechanism has to install to start the motor the correct answer is for single phase 1 HP motor and above and for three phase 3 HP motor and above is there then we have to go for the starting mechanism we need to install some mechanism to start this motor hope you got this one now let us move to the next question question number 15 above 50 HP or up to 150 HP motor the maximum permissible starting current is as per ABDC regulation if the motor rating is from 1 HP to 5 HP then 5 times of starting current is allowed starting current is allowed if the motor rating is above 5 HP to 50 HP then 2 time starting current is allowed at the time of starting and if the motor rating is above 50 HP to 150 HP the starting maximum starting current allowed is 1.5 time of the full load current now the question here is above 50 HP and below 150 HP the maximum starting current allowed is 1.5 time of the full load current suppose this 50 ampere of 50 HP motor taking let's say 90 ampere of current just I am taking an example it can it can be wrong but just for making you understand suppose 50 HP motor is taking 90 ampere of current let's say 100 ampere of current for easy calculation 100 ampere of current okay then at the time of starting the maximum allowed current will be 100 into 1.5 that is 150 ampere of current if at the time of starting the starting current is coming as 200 ampere then it is not allowed you have to change your starting mechanism to make the starting current less than 150 ampere for if the full load current is 100 ampere okay don't go for the algebraic calculation here just I took an example it may be wrong just to make you understand I took a full load current as 100 ampere for 50 HP motor it may be different okay now let us move to the other question question number 16 the cross section area of phase and neutral conductor is s then the minimum cross section area of the earth conductor will be as per ADDC regulation if the cross section area of neutral or phase wire is less than 16 square mm 16 square mm then the ECC conductor size will be equal to s suppose if the phase wire is 4 mm then the ECC wire will be 4 mm if the phase wire is 6 mm then the ECC wire will be earth wire will be also 6 mm till 16 square mm okay now if the phase wire is greater than 6 square mm and less than and equal to 35 square mm then the ECC wire will be 16 square mm what does it mean suppose till 16 square mm the whatever be the phase size same size will be the for the ECC wire after 16 square mm and less than 35 square mm of the phase wire the ECC wire size will be 16 square mm let's say example 25 square mm in between them so if the phase wire is 25 square mm the ECC wire will be 16 square mm 
and if the phase wire is equal to 35 square mm as you see equal greater less than or equal so if the phase wire is 35 square mm then the ecc wire will be 16 square mm the third thing uh, adtc regulation saying that if the phase wire is greater than 35 square mm then the ecc wire will be s by 2 meaning suppose if the wire size is phase and neutral wire size is 50 square mm then the ecc wire will be half of the phase wire that is 50 by 2 it's it will become as 25 square mm so here the question is for 50 square mm phase and neutral wire what would be the minimum size of ecc wire earth conductor wire so as this 50 square mm wire is greater than 35 square mm wire or any wire or cable which is greater than 35 square mm then the ecc size will be half of the phase or neutral wire so ecc wire is sorry the phase wire is 50 square mm so the ecc wire will be half of it so it will be 25 square mm so here the answer is s by 2 right now let us move to the other question question number 17 main incomer circuit breaker rating is 16 100 ampere the minimum size of the earth conductor will be op option a is 70 square mm option b is 50 square mm option c is 50 square mm option d is one sorry 300 square mm what is the question is this is our lv panel and the breaker rating main incomer breaker rating is 1600 ampere so as in my previous question i explain you if the incomer breaker rating is more than 500 500 or more than 500 we need to earthquake for the panel so as here the incomer rating is more than 500 so we require two earthquake for this panel the question asking is what would be the size of the earth conductor if the incomer breaker rating is 1600 ampere the correct answer is a 70 square mm as per the adtc regulation if the breaker rating is still 1600 ampere then the ecc uh, sorry earth conductor wire size is 70 square mm so this conductor size will be 70 square mm and this conductor size will be 70 square mm suppose if this incomer rating is 2000 or 2500 then the wire size will change to 150 square mm this is as per the adtc regulation so you have to go to this chart and thoroughly remember this chart then only you can understand this one now let us move to the other question the minimum residual operating current setting for elevator and escalator lift is as per the adtc regulation for different loads there is a different residual operating current setting like for light the minimum is 100 milliampere maximum is 100 milliampere for power loads the maximum residual operating current setting is 30 milliampere like for the uh, fridges washing machine water heater it's all maximum residual current rating is 30 milliampere so here the question is what would be this rating for elevator escalator and lift the correct answer is 300 to 500 milliampere if you are deciding the residual rccb for the lift elevator and escalator then you have to go for the rccb which having a sensitivity rating of 300 to 500 milliampere or in between them now let us move to the other question question number 19 for cable trunking the space factor the total cross section area of the cable compared with the internal cross section area of the trunking must not exceed meaning the question is asking suppose this is the trunking size and there is a so many single phase circuits wire is there so what would be the space factor how much the trunking need to be full and how much to be empty the correct percentage is 60 percent meaning the maximum allowed wires in the trunking is 60 percent full and 40 percent should be empty so the answer is 60 percent option number c now let us move to the other question question number 20 if the cross section area of the phase and neutral conductor is s then the minimum cross section area of the equipotential bonding will be as per the adtc regulation this is for the ecc size now let us check for the equipotential bounding conductor then as per the adtc regulation if the phase size cable is 16 square mm and less then the equipotential bounding conductor will be s by 2 if the phase and neutral conductor will be between 16 square mm to 35 square mm then the equipotential bounding conductor will be 10 square mm and if the phase and neutral conductor size will be greater than 35 square mm then the ecc uh, sorry equipotential bonding conductor will be s by 4 so in our question 
द फेस कंडक्टर साइज इज सेवेंटी स्क्वायर एम एम मीनिंग इट इज ग्रेटर दैन थर्टी फाइव स्क्वायर एम एम देन द ई सी सी साइज विल बी द फेस कंडक्टर साइज डिवाइडेड बाई फोर सो हियर द साइज ऑफ द इक्वी पोटेंशियल बाउंडिंग कंडक्टर विल बी सेवेंटी बाई फोर एटीन स्क्वायर एम एम सो द नेक्स्ट अवेलेबल साइज इज ट्वेंटी स्क्वायर एम एम सो द ई बाउंडिंग इक्वी पोटेंशियल बाउंडिंग कंडक्टर फॉर सेवेंटी स्क्वायर एम एम विल बी कैलकुलेटेड बाई द रिलेशन एस बाई फोर सो द करेक्ट आंसर इज एस नॉट एस बाई फोर एस बाई फोर बट नॉट एक्सीडिंग ट्वेंटी फाइव स्क्वायर एम एम बिकॉज इफ सपोज दिस सेवेंटी स्क्वायर एम एम इज नॉट देयर सपोज इट्स देयर अराउंड वन एटी वन एटी फाइव स्क्वायर एम एम देन द एस बाई फोर दट इज वन एटी फाइव बाई फोर विल बी ग्रेटर दैन ट्वेंटी फाइव स्क्वायर एम एम इन दैट केस वी हैव टू गो फॉर ट्वेंटी फाइव स्क्वायर एम एम केबल साइज ओनली मीनिंग If the cable size is greater than thirty-five square mm, then we have to go for the equipotential bonding conductor S by four, but it will not exceed more than twenty-five square mm. So the correct answer is S by four, but not exceeding twenty-five square mm. For more information, check the ADDC regulation. This chart you will better understand this one. Now let us move to the other question. Question number twenty-one. The earthing this earthing system is coming under which type of earthing system? here there is one photo and the question is asking this earthing system is which earthing system tt tns tnc it so just for a overview i will tell you as you see that there is a one earth conductor separate with the neutral conductor so neutral and earth are separate to each other so of course it will be s stand for separate and n stand for neutral and t stand for terra which have the meaning of earth so here the earth conductor and the neutral conductor are separate from each other so this is under tns system if suppose this neutral conductor and phase conductor is together then it will be tnc system as the phase and neutral are one conductor if suppose there is no earth conductor and we earth it the body of the load at locally then it will be tt system this will be very deep topic i cannot explain in this video just you understand that here the neutral and the phase is neutral and the earth is two different conductor so it is coming under tns system and if the neutral and earth is one conductor then it will come as tnc c means combined but here it is a separate so it is coming under tns earthing system now let us move to the other question question number 23 the power factor at any connection point between the distribution board and the owner electrical installation shall be maintained between as per adc regulation the power factor to be maintained between 0.9 to 1 so here the option 1 is correct the power factor 0.9 lagging to unity is correct lagging this second option is telling 0.9 leading to unity it's wrong because the as per adc regulation 0.9 lagging to 1 have to maintain at the consumer end so this first option will be correct question number 23 is maximum of how many socket outlet shall be allowed in a radial circuit and ring circuit suppose there is a socket outlet one like that there is a two three four if the four sockets are there in one loop then and it is fed from one distribution board from one mcb this is called the radial circuit so maximum four is allowed in the radial circuit and maximum eight is allowed in the ring circuit ring circuit what does it mean ring suppose there is a other four so we loop it and again we came back to the same circuit breaker that arrangement is called ring circuit so maximum outlet single single outlet allowed is 8 on the ring circuit so the correct answer is for radial 4 and for ring 8 now if we will check diva regulation then the first option will be correct because in diva regulation five single socket is allowed in radial and 10 single socket allowed in the ring so for diva regulation option 1 will be correct but as we are talking here adc regulation So as per ADTC regulation, option B is correct. Four and eight. Now let us move to the other question. Question number twenty-four. The minimum height of the socket on the kitchen worktop is. We know that in kitchen we have worktop where we are keeping our stove, microwaves, and other kitchen equipments, cookers. So here we have always a socket to operate this electrical load. Question asking what is the minimum height of the socket from the worktop in kitchen? In, as per ADTC regulation, it is hundred mm. minimum it can be go for 250 mm also but minimum here asking the minimum height minimum height is 100 mm if this question will be for diva then 
ऑप्शन ए विल बी करेक्ट बिकॉज एज पर दी बार द मिनिमम हाइट रिक्वायर्ड फॉर द सॉकेट आउटलेट एब द वर्क टॉप इज टू हंड्रेड एंड फिफ्टी स्क्वायर लेंथ बट एज वी आर टॉकिंग हियर एज पर ए डी डी सी रेगुलेशन सो ऑप्शन बी विल बी करेक्ट ना लेटस मूव टू द लास्ट क्वेश्चन क्वेश्चन नंबर ट्वेंटी फाइव कलर कोड फॉर सिंगल फेस सॉकेट आउटलेट एंड थ्री फेस सॉकेट आउटलेट शैल बी एज पर ए डी डी सी रेगुलेशन सपोज देर इज अ इंडस्ट्रियल सॉकेट थ्री फेस सिंगल फेज एंड थ्री फेज सो बाई कलर ब्लू इज द कलर कोड फॉर सिंगल फेज सॉकेट एंड रेड इज द कलर कोड फॉर थ्री फेज सॉकेट आई होप यू इंजॉय दिस वीडियो एंड यू लर्न समथिंग न्यू फ्रॉम दिस वीडियो दिस वीडियो विल बी वेरी हेल्पफुल फॉर दो स्टूडेंट हु आर एस्परेंट फॉर द ए डी डी सी एग्जाम इफ यू फाइंड दिस वीडियो इन्फॉर्मेटिव देन प्लीज सब्सक्राइब टू माई चैनल गिव थम्स अप टू दिस वीडियो एंड शेयर विद योर फ्रेंड वी विल मीट इन एनी अदर वीडियो Till then take care keep learning and bye bye thank you so much